Hello everyone, I'm bringing you Dark Blue Kiss, the sequel to Kiss Me Again. This time, the two male leads' relationship seems to be a bit of a crisis Oh, there is actually a third party. Since Carl made out at Pete's house and was caught red-handed by Pete's father, the two have sort of come clean with Pete's father. Only this state of affairs has to be kept secret for now. Carl and Pete are both third-year engineering students. Carl's mother raised him and his sister independently now that his sister is abroad. She has to spend money everywhere, and Carl teaches his younger siblings homework to earn some money for this. The story begins with Carl at Tripp's Milk Tea Shop where he is tutoring his schoolmates. As for his husband Pete, because his father is a big plutocrat, of course, not lack of money, he is lonely after a dip in the swimming pool and immediately messages Carl that he is out of luck if Carl doesn't get there in time before he gets to shore. Carl is quite fond of such a strong guy and immediately finished packing up and got on his classmate Mark's motorcycle and rushed to the swimming pool. Seeing this, Pete also had bad thoughts and dragged Carl directly into the pool for a lovemaking session. Carl was a little bummed because he didn't bring any clothes to change into. Pete just said to let Carl wear his own clothes. They've been together for so long, they've worn their underwear. What's there to be ashamed of? While changing clothes, Pete gets a call from his senior, who works for a media company that specializes in creating online celebrities. He talks a good game, hoping that Pete will be able to play up his posture. And when he does, he's guaranteed to be a quick crowd favorite. Pete couldn't resist the senior, so he agreed to go over there tomorrow to take a look from the swimming pool. The two went back to Carl's house. Pete really likes Carl's mother's cooking, but the relationship between the two is currently under wraps. Carl has never wanted his mother to worry about him, so the two of them have always kept their mouths shut to his mother. But Pete isn't so upset that he's actually giving Carl food in front of his mother. Luckily, his mother doesn't care too much, so Pete gets a good scolding from Carl. On the other hand, the milk tea store that Carl frequents is run by a pair of brothers, Tripp and Yates. Yates' best friend is Mark, the biker from before, but the kid is a troubled teenager, always taking Yates out for something. For this reason, Tripp has not been able to find fault with Mark. Warm hints, Mark and Tripp are both into guys, but Yates' foss head over Hughes for Hindi, asking for her contact info in different ways every day. On this day, Pete arrives at his senior's office, as scheduled, and runs into Kaka, who is there to film. The boy is not famous one, but by a pair of big watery eyes, there are still so many fans who like him, but he doesn't seem to have the best tutelage, and just met up with Pete and ostracized him in every way. When he sees Pete talking to the senior, he realizes that he thinks Pete is his fan, it's pissing Pete off, he instantly agrees to join the debut program with his seniors, and he and Kukua sort of bond. Kukua is a real troublemaker. Just after Pete, she got into a fight with Carl over milk tea at a milk tea store. The result is that Carl's clothes are accidentally sold. He sneaks off to the bathroom to admire Carl's body. As an apology, he lends Carl his clothes. Uh, I wonder if he just did that on purpose. It turned out that not long after, Carl's mother asked him to come to the cram school, saying that the principal had something to say to Carl. When he sees the principal, Carl realizes that the principal wants him to help Kaka, who is the principal's real son. With his tuition, it looks like he wants more access to Carl, and the remedial lessons are just an excuse to lie to a simple person like Carl. Carl can really say no. His mother's already low salary, and his sister's expenses abroad make it necessary for him to take on Kaka, an unsuspecting student. At this point, going back to Tripp's side of the story, Tripp goes to the club to catch Yates as Yates has been dragged to the club by Mark again to hang out. As a result, Yates took Mark's car and skipped out first. Tripp was kind enough to give Mark a ride home. After all, it's so late, he couldn't get a cab anyway. In the car, Mark had a moment of nervousness as he helped him hang up his seatbelt. Just when I thought the two of them were going to make some kind of move in the car. As a result, nothing happened and the two drove straight back. Mark actually respects Tripp, but he resents the fact that Tripp is like his own father droning on and on about education. Though Mark doesn't say it, he's quite grateful to Tripp. Upon arriving at Mark's doorstep, Tripp sees Mark's dead notice and wonders if it should help the brother. The next day, after Tripp teaches Yates and Mark a lesson, Kukua finally arrives at the milkshake store as well. Carl was very annoyed to see him coming. Is this kid so unpunctual? But since it promised people, this class must be taught seriously. But not long after that, Pete's message comes back, telling him he has to be at the hotel in 10 minutes. To be honest, Seeing this, I really don't like Pete's character role. The kind of overbearing stubbornness of the rich young master is really off-putting. But there's no way. He's our lovely Carl's boyfriend. You can only accept it if you love it. When Carl arrives at the hotel, he realizes it's a get-together for Pete's father and business associates. During the meal, Pete's father praises his partner's children but belittles his own son, leaving Pete very hurt. I can't help it. Pete's not a good student. He is also powerless to refute it. 
The good thing is that there is still the understanding Carl sends a little hand of love. Finally, can soothe Pete's wounded little heart. But the incident did make it very difficult for Pete. By the end of the night, he couldn't switch moods, so Carl came to him. With Carl's company, all the worries have disappeared. If you want to meet someone, just say so. Why do you have to do so many unrealistic things? The next day, Carl lectures Kakao again. Carl is delayed in meeting Pete because Kakao is dead set against him. And angry, Pete comes straight to the store to find him. Only to find out that Kakao is Carl's student. The so-called enemies meet each other. He's simply Saturday in front of the two. Watching them in class, when they go back, Pete throws a tantrum. And he tells Carl to stop teaching Kakao. But Carl says Kakao's father is the principal of his own mother's school. And that it would be difficult for Carl's mother if the teaching were to be suddenly discontinued. As for the tension in Carl's family, he said nothing, is no longer hard on him, and rolls over and pins him down for an intimate exercise, as if he were making up for his own spirit. The next day, when Carl tutored Kakao again, Pete was still with him, but this Kakao is really not disturbed at all. While Carl is away, he deliberately provokes to provoke to provoke Pete. When Pete tries to make a move, he pretends that nothing is going on so that Carl misunderstands that it's Pete who's making a scene. It must be said that he is really a sinister person and his tactics are very low. For this reason, Carl and he had an argument. Pete is furious and wants to pay double the price to get Carl to stop teaching Kaka. Carl heard it and scolded him not to be so capricious. He who depends on his father for support will never understand how sad it is to be a poor child who needs to earn his own money. After saying this, they parted on bad terms. However, Carl realizes that he went too far with what he said. And after offering an apology, Pete lightens up a lot. He doesn't want to ruin their love because of Kakao, so he says he won't teach Kakao anymore. But is it really going to happen? The truth is, Carl's sister is a real pain in the ass. The first time she was abroad, her roommate was too noisy for her to study, so she wanted to move out and rent an apartment. But foreign spending is too much. Plus Carl's mother is reviewing the promotion stage, this time to offend the principal. That is playing with fire. So Carl, he had to secretly teach Kakao without Pete's knowledge first. And at this point, there is a new situation on Trip and Mark's side. As Trip helped the girls before, he got Yates into the detention center with him. For this, Trip also spent a large sum of money to bail them out. After Trip gets angry again, Mark learns the hard way and decides to take action to make Trip change his mind about himself. For this reason, he even wears rabbit ears and follows Yates down the street selling cakes. It's kind of cute, but not really. A little while later, Kenny comes over to help. Soon they sold out of cakes. Trip was happy to learn about it though he kept his mouth shut. On the other hand, Carl continues to secretly help Kaka with her lessons. Through contact with him, Carl learned that Kaka's family is actually quite unfortunate. After his parents divorced, he followed his father, but the relationship between father and son was very awkward. Kaka also meets with him only when he is short of money. Similar family encounters make Carl feel compassionate. Suddenly, Pete arrives, which freaks Carl out straight away. He rushes Kaka into hiding, under Tripp's cover. This was hidden from Pete. Although Pete seems to sense something strange, he can only think he's being paranoid. However, he solemnly asks Carl not to hide anything between two people who love each other. What could Carl say but to oblige him? But keeping it from Pete like that was very hard on his heart. But family and love, he has to juggle. Hey, Carl is really hard. He can't tell his family what's bothering him, let alone tell Pete to know. But he told Trip all of this anyway. After all, Trip has a lot of social experience and is an old acquaintance in the circle. Trip runs a milk tea store from scratch and knows the pain and exhaustion of hard work and money best. He understands and supports Carl's decision, but Trip still wishes that Carl would tell Pete what's in his heart. It might be better to open up like this to avoid misunderstandings. On Saturday, as promised, he came to the countryside to take pictures with Pete. His mind went back to the embarrassment of the milkshake store earlier and what Trip had said to him. He wanted to say what he really thought, but he couldn't say it because this was the first time he had ever seen. Pete so focused for something, he didn't want to disturb Pete at the moment. On the other hand, Trip is looking to be humiliated by a fat guy while parking in his garage. So the two of them go at it. Trip is thin and obviously a bit out of his lead. It just so happens, and Mark arrived in time to fight off the fat man. The two return to Trip's house, and Mark is very sweet to help him with his medication. It is also at this point that Trip gradually changes his mind about Mark, and gives him the money from the sale of Mark's motorcycle, and invites him to work at the store. Mark is also a very funny guy. He was too embarrassed to make a direct statement and messaged Trip right out the door, sort of accepting Trip's kindness. By this time, the relationship between the two men had been eased. And as for Kaka, he actually came to the school to see Carl in a dignified manner. It seems that he is obviously coming from a bad place. 
and with an online popularity, PK between him and Pete going on at the moment, it looks like a bloodbath is about to begin.